Welcome to What If Blank Was a Pokemon Region, the video series where I take a look at what certain countries and areas around the world could be like as Pokemon regions and build hypothetical Pokemon games based around them. So far, I've made videos on a myriad of different places, and within them, I examined the locations and landmarks of a place and how they could translate into a Pokemon region's landscapes. I look at the wildlife, legends, and folklore of a country and create Pokemon based from them. And of course, I create an in-depth, albeit fan fiction-y story that ties into my channel's shared universe, the Buddyverse. In today's video, we'll be traveling to the western coast of the United States and taking a look at what it could be like as a Pokemon region. Now you might be wondering, didn't Mr. Buddy already make a region based on this area? And the answer to that is yes, technically. Years ago, I made a theoretical region based on the entire western United States, which included the west coast. The problem with that region, and this is something I realized even back then, is that it was just too dang big. I tried to cram 10 US states into one Pokemon region, and the result is that it felt way too large, but at the same time, it almost felt like I wasn't scratching the surface of all the cool ideas that could be incorporated. I've decided to return to the concept of the Western US, but this time split it up into multiple videos. Today's video will be about a region comprised of all the coastal states, California, Oregon, and Washington, and in another video down the line, I'll cover the other Western states as a separate region. Okay, so that's the setup, a theoretical Pokemon region based on California, Washington, and Oregon, the west coast of the United States. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. This is what the western coast of the US could be like as a Pokemon region. Giving a brief overview of the West Coast geography, it's very rugged and hilly, especially when compared to most of the United States. California is arid and hot, though it features the fertile Central Valley between its coast and the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Oregon is covered in forests and rivers, receiving heavy rainfall, especially in its more alpine regions, and Washington takes all the vibes of Oregon and cranks it up to 11 due to its high altitude. It rains a lot, there's snow and ski resorts, and a whole lot of lush mountains and gardens. All of this is of course an oversimplification of the west coast environment, but it gives you a general idea of the biomes that could be found in this region. Another thing I'd be remiss if I didn't mention in this general overview is some of the history regarding the west coast. Way back in the olden days, more specifically the 1800s, the United States was still relatively new. The east coast of the land had been populated heavily after America declared its independence from Britain, but the western frontier was still, to the fledgling US populace anyways, unexplored. Bands of wagons and adventurers were assembled, and there was a massive push westward as pioneers moved into the area seeking new fortunes. Most of California was settled due to the abundance of gold and precious ore in the area, which caused the famous California Gold Rush. Oregon was the end point of the heralded Oregon Trail, and many people rushed there in hopes to settle down and claim fertile land that they could farm. Washington was viewed similarly, and was a place for traders and burgeoning farmers to plant their roots and try sustaining themselves. All of that, though important to the western US's history, was 200 years ago. And today, California, Washington, and Oregon have grown into very different places. There's definitely still traces of their origins in farming, gold mining, and lumber gathering, but with the turn of the century, the west coast evolved greatly. It's now become one of the most modern and pop culture destinations of the world. Famous celebrities create movies here. Incredible new technology is introduced to the world. Companies set up their headquarters in the area, and hey look! Disneyland! Yes, though the west coast may not have the thousands of years of history like some of the other countries I've made into regions, there's still a lot of modern innovation here. Not every Pokemon region needs to be steeped in years of antiquity, as we've seen with the Unova region, and that was my main idea when going into and creating this west coast region. In this section, we'll be talking about possible new Pokemon that could be created for a West Coast United States Pokemon region. I combed over the history, mythology, and wildlife of California, Washington, and Oregon, and I've created a bevy of new monsters in tandem with some fantastic artists that could inhabit this coastal region. As we go through them all, I'll detail what they're based on, their typing, how they could fit into the region, and their possible abilities. 
First up, we have the Starter Pokémon. These are the three Pokémon lines you get to choose between at the start of your journey, and whichever friendly animal you pick gets to accompany you on your adventure to take on the Pokémon League. What I did with these three starters was make each of them representative of a different state that this region is based on. The Fire Starter, for instance, ties back to California and is heavily based on a Gila monster. This is a type of lizard found in California's arid deserts, and I thought would be an interesting fit for a fire starter, especially because the Gila monster is one of the few venomous lizards in the world. Obviously, this means that as the Pokémon evolves, it will gain a poison typing, and it's very accustomed to subduing its foes with heavy status conditions. The Water Starter references the state of Oregon, mainly because it's a beaver and these animals are found in abundance within the lakes, rivers, and wetlands spread across Oregon's terrain. It starts out as a pure water type, but its final evolution learns the long-held secrets about making dams the rest of the species knows, and it becomes a partial ground type that can fortify its constructions and itself with strong coatings of mud. Last but not least is the Grass Starter, embodying Washington State. It's based on a raccoon, a pesky critter found in the mountainous forests and garbage cans of the evergreen domain. Raccoons are very mischievous in nature, often stealing food or using their clever wits to outsmart other animals, and to reference that, this starter is a part dark type that often tricks or steals from other Pokémon. While its plans do sometimes go right, it normally finds itself in trouble, usually because its ego got in the way. The next category of new Pokémon in the region are all the regional variants. These are versions of existing Pokémon that have adapted and evolved in various ways to fit the environments of this West Coast US-based land. They all have new typings, new designs, and generally a new way they fit into the Pokémon world at large. First up is a variant of Vullaby and Mandibuzz, based on the California Condor. This is a type of New World Vulture that briefly went extinct in the 1980s but has since been reintroduced into the western US. It's characterized by its large size, graceful movements, and powerful wings that can keep it aloft with only a few flaps. These variants are flying electric type to showcase the raw speed of the California Condor, and their ability is Speed Boost. As a companion to the Vullaby line, we next have new forms for Rufflet and Braviary. These variants are based on the Osprey, sometimes called the Seahawk, a large bird found throughout Washington and Oregon's coasts. These birds of prey swoop into lakes and rivers to catch fish, and these variants do the same, with an added water type to showcase how comfortable they are with diving beneath the waves. Their abilities are Keen Eye and Gulp Missile, the signature ability of Cramorant. The next variants are found in the metropolitan areas. They're versions of Scrafty and Scraggy that become fairy psychic type. If the regular Scrafty line embodies the idea of wayward youth and New York gangs, then these Scrafty are much more hipstery and artsy. I wanted to showcase something of the perceived rivalry between the West Coast and East Coast, and variants of Scrafty that embrace the West Coast hipster subculture were the perfect way to do that. You best not mess with these variants because they were fighting Pokemon battles before it was cool. Their scarves double as a powerful weapon, and their ability is competitive. Throughout the coasts of the region, you'll spot a new variant of seal and dugong often found hanging out on floating pallets or sleeping on the beach. These are based on the California Harbor Seal, with a little bit of sea lion thrown in for good measure. In real life, these animals are very aggressive, often fighting for territory, and these variants become part dark type and fight anyone and everyone who challenges their territory. There is also a brand new exclusive evolution to these variants called Narbrawl. It's a bigger, beefier dugong that's fought for territory so many times that other Pokémon have given up challenging it. Its ability is Moxie or Intimidate, because, I mean, look at that thing. Debatably, one of the biggest creations the West Coast is famous for is the Starbucks coffee shop chain. Founded in Seattle, Washington during the 70s, Starbucks has provided plenty of West Coast residents, and honestly, the entire US, with beverages to kickstart their day. To reference this, not only would this region have plenty of coffee shops you can relax in, but there would be regional variants of Sinistine Pulte guys that reflect their popular drinks. They inhabit discarded coffee cups they find and are now fire ghost type, harnessing the heat of their new liquid home. Their ability, Iced Tea, is similar to Zen Mode, and when the Pokémon gets beneath 50% of its health, it changes into a chilling alternate form that's an Ice Ghost type. 
One of California's most stunning areas is the Redwood National Park. This is a forest where the gigantic redwood sequoias have grown for thousands of years. For this region, the Pokemon variants I've created to reference these stunning trees are versions of Bond, Sly, and Pseudo Wudo that actually become grass type. That's right! In this region, they've dropped their rock typing facade and fully embraced the plant way of life. In addition to that, these variants can live for hundreds of years, and it's said that when one has lived for 500 years, it will evolve into a new Pokemon, Sentry. This massive old tree is a grass fighting type, and I wanted to make it like an Elder of the Forest, or even a Deku Tree type figure. It's old, it's big, but it's respected by the Pokemon of the forest and can defend its home if need be. Chlorophyll is its ability. Next up are variants of Roly Coley, Carcol, and Colossal that reference California's abundance of rare ore and the Great California Gold Rush. Roly Coley and Carcol are rock steel type, and their bodies are partially stone but have flecks and chunks of incredibly rare gold within them. Upon evolving, these variants split open like a geode, exposing the impressive diamonds buried within. Colossal is a rock fairy type, and the entire line have the ability Dazzling. The final regional variants within this region are versions of Whalemur and Whalelord. These variants are based on the many whales found on the west coast, mainly the California Grey Whale and the Oregon Sperm Whale. These creatures have barnacles and clumps of rock that have embedded on their skin, and this Pokemon line has picked up on that idea and become a water rock type, amassing a hard armor of sea life on itself. For their ability, they have Aftermath, which hurts the enemy Pokemon when they KO it. Moving on, we have the common Pokémon of the region. These are all the non-starter, non-variant Pokémon you would find a lot of while journeying around to different locales. First up is a fox that has three different evolutions. This Pokémon is based on the Island Fox, a creature found throughout California's Channel Islands. What makes this fox so special is that when researchers discovered it, they found it had evolved differently on each of the islands it inhabited. On some islands, the fox is a different color, on others, it has larger paws to dig into the ground and catch prey, its fangs can be sharper on some islands, and so on. This fox Pokemon, Adipup, is based on that idea, and when you travel to the Channel Islands-based area in this region, your first stop will have the normal type fox you can capture, and then depending on which island you take it to and level it up on, it will evolve into a different Pokemon. On Island A, it will become the fighting type Zorog with massive paws that strike enemies. On Island B, it will become the fairy type Varvixus, whose fluffy tail enraptures opponents. And on Island C, your fox will evolve into Kitsunail, a steel type Pokemon with massive steely fangs. All of these creatures have adaptability as their ability. In the region's water routes, you'll occasionally be stopped by a Pokemon based on the California Kelp. Not really a ton to say about this one. It's a water grass type, it hangs out in the region's watery areas, people in the region will eat its leaves as a high-class delicacy, and its long, vine-like arms will attach to those passing by so it can hitch a ride. Its ability is Tangled Vines, which much like tangling hair, lowers the speed of Pokemon that make contact with it. The next new Pokemon is a one-stage normal fairy type Chihuahua. Now yes, the Chihuahua is technically a breed of dog native to Mexico, but the reason I'm including it in this west coast region is to somewhat tie into the classic valley girl trope of a popular beauty queen with a small purse dog. In fact, this Pokemon is even shaped like a purse! Talk about totes adorbs! Its abilities are strong jaw and cute charm. Moving on, we have an ant frozen in amber, the sticky substance found in trees that has a preservative property. This Pokemon is a bug rock type and it utilizes the amber it's encased in to launch devastating attacks. It has a split evolution based on if its attack or defense is higher, and if it's more attack prone it will break free from the amber and become an agile bug fighting type with Justified. If its defense is higher, it will sculpt the amber into sturdier armor and retain its bulky rock typing with the ability Battle Armor, defending it from critical hits. The final common Pokemon of this region is also the Pseudo Legendary, so picture its stats and moves being on the higher end of the power scale. The concept behind this Pokemon is a UFO that evolves into a full fledged alien creature. My general thought process behind this idea was that because the west coast of the US has had so many alleged UFO sightings and alien encounters, time back to them would be a cool idea. Unova already did this with the LGM line, but honestly, you can never have enough Pokemon that come from the stars in my opinion. 
Within the region, people assume the first form of this Pokemon is man-made and not truly from outer space, but upon evolving, everyone sees this galactic monster for what it truly is. Ability-wise, it has telepathy, with clear body being its hidden ability. Alright, the last new Pokemon we gotta talk about are the region's legendaries. These are the ultra-powerful creatures that either due to their incredible feats, raw strength, or how elusive they are, have attained a status in the region as being incredibly rare. As per usual, I created two legendary Pokemon for this region, and I tried to make them revolve around the theme of technology versus nature. I feel like this theme truly embodies the West Coast, where some places like Silicon Valley are making great strides forward with technological pursuits no matter the cost, while there still exist many rural areas that remain undisturbed and nature-filled. To represent the vast openness of the West Coast natural environments, one of the legendaries is inspired by the legend of the Dark Watcher. It's said that these spectral apparitions watch travelers from afar as they hike through the West Coast mountains. If you get too close to one, it will vanish before you can touch it, and reports of these mysterious beings have been around for hundreds of years. This legendary would be a ghost grass type, and though it has a scary typing, it's actually very kind and well-meaning towards the Pokemon of the forest. It looks out for those that inhabit the mountains, it watches over, and it ensures that any threats to its home are taken care of. In addition to its Dark Watcher origins, this legendary is also inspired by a creature from Lumberjack folklore called the Hide Behind. It's a similar concept to the Dark Watcher, where it's a shadowy apparition that stalks people, but the hide behind is said to blend into the far reaches of your vision, waiting just out of sight for its moment to strike. For its ability, this legendary has Shapeshifter, a new power that allows it to blend into the shadows and increase its evasiveness at the start of the battle, depending on how large the opponent Pokemon is. If it's fighting something small, it will raise it by one stage, but if it's fighting something massive, it has the potential to raise its evasion stat tremendously. The other legendary is a Steel Dark type robot, which naturally means it represents the pushing forward of technology. This Pokemon was created by one of the biggest tech companies in the region, and was touted as being a game changer for Pokemon battles, mainly because of its immense strength and ability to change form into a massive super weapon. Unfortunately, there was a bug in the system, and this Pokemon malfunctioned heavily, leading to it gaining more sentience than it should have had. Its creators tried to shut it down, but it was too powerful for them and escaped. It now hides somewhere in the region, waiting for the day it can exact its revenge on its creators. This legendary's ability is called Brute Force, which makes it unable to flinch from any attack, even those that are boosted by Moldbreaker. 